Over the years, I've had a lot of people recommend this charcoal chimney starter for a hobo stove. And I've never really investigated them. I don't, I could not have pride in a hobo stove that looked like that, but it will work. If you just have to have something pre-made, I guess you could use this. Awful big holes in the bottom though. So there'd be a lot of coals getting through that because there's no ash catcher on the bottom. But um, look at how tall that thing is. That is ugly to use for a pre-made hobo stove. Hello YouTube, I'm David with the David West channel. I think that I have the most beautiful hobo stoves in form and function. All of my stoves have the same three or four features. Plenty of aeration up top, down at the bottom, and this side ventilation hole, which I do not like to use it as a feed hole, but I definitely like to use it for ventilation to turn it towards the wind or away from the wind if I don't want it to burn up too fast. Um, I have this elevated perforated floor in all of my stoves and the ash catcher. Um, let me just show you how beautiful they are, how well they work, and we'll try a few different techniques. This one is on its way out. It's the heat and the rust has really taken a toll on it. You can see where it's crushed in right there. and So, let's go ahead and utilize this worn out stove. We'll get some rust off of it and make a rust fire roll and fire this stove up for probably the last time. Hundred percent cotton, cotton ball. Roll it up as tight as you can. This top board is just a piece of oak that I split out. Give it some forward passes with your hand to tighten it up. Give it some forward passes with the top board to tighten it up even more. It needs to be very, very tight before you start trying to roll it. go for it. If you don't see smoke, keep on rolling it.
let's go ahead and use let's go ahead and use our poor man's hobo stove and we'll cast some sparks down onto this charred punk wood I do want to take a little bit of time to watch each one of these stoves burn so Remember that video that I just did where I struck this edge 103 times? This little piece of chert. Let's go ahead and use it to cast sparks off of the steel. Now it's hard to see in this bright sunlight, so I might have to just strike, you know, three or four times and blow on it to see if I actually have ignition. Make sure none of this is ignited. No, it's not ignited, so we'll put it back. That's a good hot ember there. Now let's watch this one burn a little bit. Boy, I almost snuffed it out, didn't I? If you didn't watch that video where we built this poor man's hobo stove, I took a regular 38 ounce uh, green bean can and used a pocket knife to make all the cuts. The cuts for the elevated floor, the vent holes, the side ventilation, and then we took and we cooked up some bacon. And then in the next video, the next day, I decided, well, that's when I actually, that's when I put this vent hole cover on out of expanded metal because the coals are falling out and uh, so that next day we cook some uh, boiled eggs and some coffee on it too doesn't look like much tiny little stove but it is actually big enough
it is actually big enough to get the job done. <laughs> Alright, let's try my favorite. These bean can stoves are my favorite. So what I first started out making, so you can imagine that I would be partial to them. It doesn't matter where I stand, does it? So let's go ahead and use some char cloth and uh, fire up some leaves to show this one burning. I'm going to have the same problem with this char cloth. You cannot tell when it's ignited because the sun is so bright. Oh, that's two pieces. Tear your denim char cloth in half, which will expose a bunch of threads. Line up both thready halves on top of one another. Stick it about a sixteenth of an inch behind the sharp edge on the shirt and one strike ignite it. Let's watch it burn a little bit. You know, the Revere wear, the ones that have the copper bottoms and the rest of the pots made out of stainless steel. I took the handle off and uh, here's a rack that I made for it. This was like a craft basket that you would uh, sort of strap a bunch of dried flowers to and hang it on the wall. I cut it down and made it fit right on that lip. You'll need to check this video out too because I, I have three of them. One where I made it, one where I modified it, and then the next one where I cooked a uh, filet mignon steak on it. So this is, this is a great stove. I'm not sure if these close-ups are any good at all until I get in there and start editing the video. Keychain ferro rod. This is a bayite. It's about three and eighth inches long and five sixteenths in diameter. And as you've seen a thousand times on this channel, my EDC pocket knife, a Stanley 10-049. So you want to take the leaves and slightly process them, put them down on the table, and we've got this wind. We'll do the best we can do. Make a little hole in the center to catch the sparks, and when those sparks make a flame they'll actually have something to climb up. And you want to have some other uh, thin 
crunchy leaves ready for when that flame starts to catch. It doesn't have to depend on those leathery oak leaves, but you can put those other leaves on top, sort of build it. And it goes something like this. You see the wind blowing it away? And I'll grab up some of these crunchy, thin leaves. Let's watch that burn a little bit. All right, do me a favor. Before you leave my channel, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and in that drop-down list, select all. And do give the video a like. Let's see if we could do our outro with all four stoves burning at the same time. We'll catch you on the next one.